A warm welcome back to the Forensic Detailing channel. Uh, do not forget to subscribe. Are you a mug if you've been persuaded to buy electric vehicles? That's today's topic of discussion. Very controversial because lots of people have taken the plunge. And then a lot of people, if you haven't taken the plunge, are very, very cynical. I haven't taken the plunge. I don't think I'm ever going to take the plunge. I think you'd have to, like, pull the money out of my rotting corpse if it was still there to ever get me to pay for an electric vehicle. And I'm going to go into why I'm, I'm sort of like that. Right. So that's the introduction. <laughs> I've made some... These are, these are my notes. Um... Now, first of all, for me, this is about trust. Whenever I see a movement, you know, and this is like a movement to shift us from one technology which has been established forever, as far as I'm concerned, to, to a new one, I ask myself a very basic question is who's doing the shifting and why are they doing it? And this seems to be coming from our political leaders. Um, and obviously, then you think you, you look at the government and think, do you actually trust our uh, government to do the right thing by us, or are they gonna, are they doing the right thing by them? Well, about twenty years ago, we were we were persuaded or we were given incentives to move over to diesel fuel, and if and then if you did that and everyone moved over because of these tax cuts with it, you know. They then, later on, started telling you they didn't want you in diesels and we're getting all these pollution issues and they're going to have to start charging you more, you know, and introduce pollution zones. So if you followed their advice, you'd be worse off, okay? So in this instance, we're being, t we're being told that global warming is a big problem and, uh, you know, we need to cut uh, emissions and we've got targets and you've got to play ball. Well, my decision on that, on, on what I'm told comes from 48 years of gut instinct, and my gut instincts are finely tuned. It's a sensitive machine. Um, and here is what it is in a nutshell, is if when the government edges, urges me to do anything, anything, you're usually better off doing the opposite of what they tell you. <laughs> You may think that's cynical, but that is just what 48 years of this planet has led me to believe. None of our political leaders or people I see, in the, you know, that I see in, in the news and I listen to them and stuff, none of them have got any political conviction. They're all career politicians. And I don't trust a word of, of what they say. Uh, no matter what side they are of the fence, shouldn't really talk about politics. But if I had to vote, I would vote for the monster raving loony party. I would. <laughs> You get more sense out of them. Right, the next thing is, if the government really gave a flying you-know-what about the environment and the emissions, why the hell are we allowed to rock around in cars that can do 200 miles an hour on the roads with ridiculous emissions like V12s, V8, even V6s, high turbocharged cars? Why are we allowed to take our kids to school in giant... Um, you know, 4x4, four four, Land Rovers, whatever, giant BMW, people carriers. Why have we allowed people to go from small, sensible cars to all wanting to drive co crossover cars, which weigh a lot more and a lot heavier, cost more fuel to power around, when 99% of the time, if you're driving around, you'll observe this, 99% of the time, it's a single person in the car um, driving around, you know, during the day. It varies a bit, obviously. Not always, but... Most cars are just one person poodling around. So we would have been, if this was a massive issue, this 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 climate thing, and I'm not a climate change denier or anything, I don't have a real strong opinion on any of it, as long as it keeps going till the point I die. I'm selfish, but I'm honest. Uh, I'd like it to keep on going longer, if I, if I think about it, <laughs> especially when you get kids. Um... <laughs> If this was an issue, they would have, there would be a much more sensible approach to what we're allowed to do on the roads. And, and if you think as well, you go over to America, they're all driving around, not all, but you see like the mums driving around going to the malls in like big four by fours with 10 litre engines and stuff like that. There can't be any issue with pollution or, or, or climate change or else we'd have just scaled back sensibly over the years. We'd have made cars lighter. There'd be regulations that says, no, you're not allowed to sell a 10 litre, 
you know, turbocharged diesel 4x4. That's a commercial sort of engine and that should be used for commercial purposes. Um, recreational vehicles used to commute to work or Joe Public Drive, we'll limit those to like one litre turbocharged units with petrol and we'll, we'll make them a lot smaller so that they can get to that maximum of 70 to 80 miles an hour, a bit slower maybe, uh, but there'll be a lot more um, performance. There's no point in you driving around in a five litre turbocharged V8, you know, gas guzzler or whatever. So they would have done that. They haven't done that. Uh, you know, and you drive around, there's loads of massive cars around. So they don't care. There's no care about the environment or else they could have put in sensible legislation over the last 20 years. Uh, instead, the solution always seems to be to tax more, doesn't it? Okay, so that's another reason why I um, am a little bit against this whole persuasion to move over to electric cars. Now, the next thing on that guideline, we are being given massive tax benefits for moving over to electric. And lots of people are taking those. Um, you know, you, you go and buy a tax, uh, an electric vehicle for your business and there's some really good tax benefits, very strong incentives that, that make those deals well worth doing. Um, so that's going to get you over to driving electric and it's going to put lots of those electric cars that they're struggling to sell out on the road. The question you've got to ask yourself is you, your common sense should tell you that you get nothing for three off this government. So if they're giving you a good deal, my worry will be that later on they will come back for the money they've, you've saved on that good deal and it will be through some sort of tax on mileage or something to do with the electric car. You'll get hit, they'll get, they'll come back for that money. You don't get anything for free. So if they're offering something, again, a bit like if you're being incentivized to do something, do the opposite of it. If they're offering you something, don't take up that offer. Go and buy an old petrol thing instead. You'll be better off. It'd be cheaper. Like you, you know, you may be in a tax incentive. Anyway, we've covered that point. Let me know what you think on that one. Um, the next thing, I do not trust the media or the news or, or on anything. So I don't trust any of the technical information that we're being, being given because this is too big an issue. It's gone right to the very top of our political system. It's big businesses, the whole car industry. It's multi-billion pound stuff. So the information that makes its way down to us is filtered. And you'll hear lots of people going into recycling information that they've heard about why electric's good, why petrol's good, why electric is a pollutant to produce it or whatever, and why petrol isn't. I don't trust any of that information, and the truth is I don't have the intelligence to really know. Um, it shows you how the news play ball, because a certain tennis player, I think it was Novak Djokovic, you know, he's quite entitled to say, like, you know, he's a fit and healthy bloke. He didn't want to take any, um, any, medicine he didn't want to take anything that he didn't know about because he's a healthy guy um you know and that's his right and I just remember at the time seeing a, a newspaper article I can't remember the paper where he was I think on the front or the back page and you can tell what the newspaper article is going to be about not by what they write by whether they use a good picture of someone or whether they use a picture of someone with a, a bad picture where they got their face looks stupid because they might be doing something so there was a picture of him with his eyes all stupid and they're just trying to mock him um, because you could see the media was playing ball with the main political narrative as well. So I don't trust any of the technical information we're ever going to get told that gets regurgitated around in the comments of videos. I don't trust any information I'm given from, um, from anyone about all of this. It's way over my head. I trust my gut instincts and my common sense. Um, my common sense says that... Um, you could have driven a car like this car is 26 years old. Um, we do not care about the environment because this car is perfectly good to drive. We can care about consumerism and buying a new car every two or three years, especially in the UK. A car gets 100,000 miles, it's done. And they've realised that now and cars are literally being built to do that so that it can sell you new vehicles. If you don't think that's happening, then, you know, I can't help you. Um, so simply just buying a car and maintaining that car for a, properly is a lot more friendly to, to the environment than trading your car in every three years. But we have this big abundance 
of cars being manufactured all around the world, which aren't really even needed. And it, it fuels a big business, it fuels a big industry that we all love and that we're all, we're all passionate about. But again, if we cared about the environment, we would stipulate that if you, you buy a car, you've got to keep it for 10 years and run it. But the world doesn't work like that. What it tells me is there's no crisis. There's no crisis, or they could have done lots of other things. When you are encouraged to go from one massive technology that everybody uses over to another one, there is a, a lot of money at stake. You are talking trillions, aren't you? And when it gets to that level, you can't trust a word you're being sold. So I look at, I look at it, I don't care about the infrastructure, there's not enough charge points. I do care about how long it takes to charge. <laughs> And I think of a simple, of a simple analogy of having a remote control car, one that's petrol, one that's electric, if you've ever, ever had both. You can fill the petrol one up instantly and play with it all day. The electric one, it's down half the day charging. And then you get some charge, you play around with it, it's flat again. Um, I just prefer petrol. Um, you know, I will, that's what I'm going to be using, unless I'm literally forced off the road to do it. I also think long term, because I'm not doing what the government are saying, I'll be better off because there'll be a massive ab abundance of petrol. <laughs> yes, they can charge me for it or whatever, but I just think I'll be better off. That's my gut instinct. I think we'll be heading towards, you know, a situation where they've got more control if you're following the way they want you to go. So go the other way. That's my thoughts on all of this, guys. Let me know your thoughts. If you've bought an electric car, how do you feel? Um, about it. 99% of the world's population do not care about cars. As long as it's got four doors, four wheels, and it's, you know, it's, you get in it and you turn it on and it gets you where to, to where they want to go, they'll probably put up with a bit of extra charge time for charging. Um, they'll like the fact it's quiet. They won't like the fact you've got to charge it a bit more. Apart from that, they won't really care. Um, but there's all sorts of other technical avenues to this discussion, isn't there? You know, about how invent environmentally friendly is creating all these batteries on the planet, the energy used to create them, the energy used to recycle them, the safety of the cars, the cost of servicing and maintaining these cars, the cost of purchasing them. When you start thinking about it, you know it's all about the bunts, it's all about the money, and uh, I'm not interested in playing that game. We'll end this video. Energy, it cannot be created or destroyed, merely changed state or form or something like that. Damn, I should have looked up the quote. That's the key thing to think of when you think of this whole electric thing. And really, this is just another way of, um, of skinning a cat, a proverbial cat. And one thing's for sure, they'll be skinning it in their favour, not ours. Forensics Detailing Channel, over and out. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think. Bye now.